Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. Today we'll be moving on from the VR content in this playlist, and we'll be taking a look at something that I'm really interested in, and that is the implementation of augmented reality, or AR. So just to explain what I have here, I've went with a completely empty project, the same as I did in the previous part of this playlist. So it's a completely blank project, blueprint based with no starter content. Now, of course, you do have the option to import the AR template. And the only reason I'm not doing that is I think it's going to be good especially if you haven't got into this type of thing before, just to have a base understanding of what's happening in the background and behind the scenes. So we're gonna go through that and implement some of that ourselves so that you can get an understanding of what it is that's happening. So there are a few things that you'll need to do to get to this stage. I do already have all of the Android stuff ready to build. If you haven't done that before, then do take a look at the beginning of this playlist. For the VR content, we've already set up an Android build system, so we've installed all of the SDK and everything. So do go back and follow that because I don't want to repeat everything uh, when there's a video already explaining that. With that done though, the only things that you really need to do is we're gonna come into the project settings and we just need to make sure that we have the Android set up correctly. So make sure that you've given your Android project a name, make sure that you've got this uh, set to 21 for the version. And again, all of this is explained in the setup video and also in the Android SDK under the project settings, make sure that you have this set up. So these are the only things that I've changed so far, but that's just because I have that detailed elsewhere. Now, specifically for this part of the playlist though, we're gonna go back to the Android options and we want to change the orientation from landscape to sensor. This is going to work a little bit better for us. And we also want to go to the input options. And under the input, we just wanna make sure where we have the default virtual joystick showing. We just want to remove this so we can clear this, which means that they won't show on screen because when you're using the AR, generally you're not gonna need that. Uh, you just want the camera view. So we'll just remove the input here. With that done, the only other things that we want to do, uh, we'll come back here later to set up the maps and modes. The final thing before we start creating that is we're gonna go to our main window, drop down the edit window, and we'll go to our plugins. Because by default, if you don't have an augmented based project, so using the template, you will need to install the plugin for AR Core, which is what we're gonna be using. Now, just a disclaimer, you probably can get this stuff working with the AR kit. Uh, like with most things inside of Unreal, they're very much a program at once and build it to multiple different platforms. I personally do not work with Apple products, so and I don't even have anything to test them on. So I don't really feel comfortable saying that this definitely will work or telling you how to do it. But of course, if you're working on those platforms and you wanted to give this a try, then also just tick the Apple AR kit here as well and uh, you can give this a go. But we're just gonna be working with AR Core for safety for now. So when you have that done, hit the restart button and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so my project's restarted. I have the AR Core ready to go. So I'm just gonna close the plugins window. We can see just here, I have a blueprints folder. I also want to have my maps folder back. So I'm just gonna create a new folder and call this maps. And with that done, I want to go into the main window and hit Control and N just so that we can create a new empty level. We don't need anything to be in here because, of course, we're going to want to spawn things in to the blank scene because the scene will be the room that we're actually in, in physically. And we're just going to hit Control and S to save this to our maps folder and we'll call this main. Now, to get the main things working, there's a few things we want to add into the blueprints folder. So we need a game mode, a pawn class and a player controller. So we'll create those now. Okay, and with those ready, we are ready to start programming. So the main thing is that we're going to go into the game mode first of all, and we just want to set up our default pawn. So the default pawn is going to be the one we've just made, which is what we're going to be controlling when we launch the game. And we're also going to set the player controller as well. So we'll set that to be the BP player controller we've just made. Now we're not going to be doing much in the player controller at the moment, but we might need that in the future. So this is just a precursor in case we do need that. Uh, because we're going to be doing a lot of things driven by touch input and screen checks, the player controller can be useful for AR. So just in case we need that, these are the two or three main things we always need when working with AR projects. So I tend to just create them even as dummy classes just to begin with. Most of the logic we're going to be doing for these tutorials will be in the pawn class. So if we open the pawn class now, the very first thing that we want to do in here is when we're inside of our viewport, we can add our camera component. So if we just add a component, drop that down and find the camera, add this onto the default scene route, that would be perfectly fine. So we've got something to look through when we spawn this. Um, and just whilst it's in my mind, actually, we're going to go back to the project settings, go to the maps and modes, and we may as well just give the default game mode to be the one that we've just created. If we drop this down, of course, that just means it's going to give us the BP pawn and the player controller's default. And we can also set the main map 
that we've created to be the editor and the game default startup as well. So that's pretty much all of the misc stuff done and we can now go back again to our pawn and start adding some logic so if we move over to the event graph the first and most important thing we want to do is off of the event begin play we want to actually call the ar session to begin so that this project actually knows to try and run some of the ar functionality so to do this we just call start ar session and this simple node is going to ask for a session config so this is something we don't have yet which is fine we can hit compile Go back to main and we can add that here so the session config is something called a data class so if we go to the miscellaneous options here we can find our data asset and what we want is an ar session config so we're going to call this d underscore session config and this is just the standard naming convention for data classes is to prefix it with a d and then if we go into this i'll just give you a quick tour of what this is doing now of course in the documentation online you can find a lot more information about this if you wanted to know a little bit more about what's going on but really this is just going to store all of the information that the ar session needs to know about the basics of how it should be processing the world so we've got things like the world alignment uh, taking in the options between gravity gravity and heading or the camera the session type has different options for whether you're picking up world geometry, face, images, things like that. And that is something I want to go into in later parts of the uh, the playlist. Uh, this is just going to be getting a project building and showing some geometry. But I want to cover things like the image recognition and, and uh, things like that for markers as well, because that's really cool. And again, you've got loads of other things. So do dive and have a look into this if you wanted in your own time. But really, all we need to do is once we have that ready, we're going to go back to the argument here. And we can now see that we have something to plug in. So this is going to start the AR session with our session config information. We can get rid of the begin overlap, we won't need that at all. And quite simply, what we want to do here is we're going to trace against a location in the world to see if we have any geometry that we can interact with or display to the user. And this is actually really simple to do. So all we want to do is off of the event tick, we're going to do this constantly at the moment. Obviously, in a proper build, you probably wouldn't want this to be showing all of the time. Maybe when you have a debug menu to turn this on and off, or when the user presses specifically on a surface, if it's a valid geometry. But again, just for demonstration and testing purposes, and so that we're ready for the next video, when we start uh, interacting with the, the geometry and spawning in objects, what we want to do is from the uh, event tick, so this shows constantly, we're going to call the, the node get all geometries and then with that we have an array returned so we can pull off of the array and call a for each loop we'll plug this in and then finally with this we can get all of the elements which are in the array and we can call a function for debugging which is debug draw tracked geometry okay and again we'll plug this in pull this up and we can change some of the details here so yellow generally is a little bit too bright i'll turn mine to an orange just because a lot of the time when you're looking through the camera the yellow just doesn't really show up very well uh, so we'll maybe make that a bit of a darker orange even as well so that should be fine the outline thickness is perfectly fine at uh, five units and the persist for seconds we can leave it zero because this is on the event tick it's going to be drawing it constantly anyway so we should have some pretty good representation of the geometry that we can interact with in the world so what this is going to do is on the event tick whilst the ar session is running anything that it recognizes as a flat plane a, um, a horizontal plane it will class as a geometry and all of these that it gets it will store in this array to track them in the future and we're just going to draw all of these constantly so as i said this is more for debugging just to show that we have something working and for us to build upon later so with that done if we hit compile and save it's actually now completely ready to go so we're going to go back to the main window we'll go to file and uh, package the project for android and we'll choose the android atc option just choose where you want this to be deployed. For me, I'm just gonna stick this on the desktop so it's easy to find and select up the folder. This is going to package this into the Android folder. And again, like I've demonstrated in the other video, you just go in, plug in your Android device and install that directly to the device. And I'm gonna try and record this uh, using my phone and some screen capture. And I'll come back and show you what I have and what you should be expecting when you have yours built and ready to go. Okay, so if that all built out and on my phone, I'm going to put this up now and what you can see is as I'm moving around the room and looking at different platforms, uh, it's going to be looking at my desk and when you can see these orange lines appearing, that's what it classes as 
a, a valid plane. So this is something that we could choose to interact with going forward. Uh, this is something which would act as like a floor or a surface. And as we go around the room, you can see that we're going to be picking up new planes and adding this to the stack of available geometry. Now, like I mentioned, you don't really want to do this on Eventic and you definitely don't want to be showing all of them because it gets a little bit crowded. Uh, this is purely for uh, debugging and demonstration purposes. But we can see that just in this short amount of time, we have something working by ourselves, which is technically an augmented reality experience. So like I said, what you'd want to do though is you'd want to maybe look at maybe the last two or three maximum planes or surfaces that you find, maybe store those, maybe view, view those, or even just only the ones that the user has most recently interacted with. And that's exactly what we're gonna be looking at in the next video. So I'm gonna wrap this video up here though. Uh, this has been hopefully a useful introduction to augmented reality. We've looked at things like the data asset and some of the important things that you need to know about what's happening when you are using the augmented reality template. I, f I find this was really useful in the virtual reality tutorials that I did and people have had some really good feedback about that that we actually took some of the stuff which is just kind of lumped into quite a big template and it's great that we've got the templates available but to people starting out it may not always make sense what each different component and function call is responsible for so we're going to be going through that step by step and hopefully we're going to have a very sensible and logical approach to our AR project by the end of this playlist. As always then if you've enjoyed the video or found this useful please do leave a like and share the video around that really helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on this channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.